Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started now. I want to thank you for joining us today. My name is Deanne Crane, and I am a program manager with the National Safety Council with the Our Driving Concern Program. I will be your moderator for today. And we want to thank you for joining us for covering the facts, injury facts that employers should be paying attention to. Just a couple of quick things before we jump in and get started. Um, if you're joining us, if you will mute, uh, mute your audio and your video, that will just ensure a smooth transition for everyone or a smooth presentation. Um, you can ask questions in the chat. If we have time at the end, we will um, answer those questions. If not, we'll do that in our post-communication uh, follow-up after this. And then at the end, there'll be a link to an evaluation that will just um, help us with future uh, webinars, resources, and things like that. So I want to welcome our presenter this morning, Ken Kolosh. Uh, Ken directs our statistical reporting and estimating systems at the National Safety Council. He leads the development of injury facts, the NSC's online st statistical resource on preventable injuries, their characteristics and costs. In addition to the injury facts, his responsibilities range from managing the Council's preliminary motor vehicle fatality, fatality assessment program to conducting an annual estimate of the number of guests injured at amusement parks. He is also the editor of the NSC's Journal of Safety Research. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ken so he can jump in and get started. Well, thank you for the introduction. It's, I'm really happy to be here with you today. Obviously, we're going to be focusing on going over the latest data and road safety trends to do so. I'm using as my primary data source injury facts. Obviously, that's one of the, uh, the opportunities I have as the manager of statistics at, at the National Safety Council to, to manage and, and update injury facts. This is not going to be a live demonstration. I'm using a series of screen grabs. Uh, but uh, at the bottom of each slide, which has injury facts data, a URL is provided where you, uh, where you could find additional information on that statistic I'm presenting. Also, uh, during post-presentation uh, 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 emails, you will receive a, a copy of a PDF of this pre uh, presentation. So there's really no need for you to frantically write down notes, sort of sit back and, and take it all in. Uh, uh, and, and you will get these slides and I believe there will be a recording if you miss anything. Um, I have two goals for this presentation. The first and foremost is to make sure everyone has a really good grounding on the uh, road safety trends uh, in the United States. Uh, my second goal is because I will well, be using injury facts as my data source. I want everyone to have a really good understanding of how to navigate injury facts, what kind of information there is available in injury facts. It's a free online resource that we maintain and update all the time. So I, I'm hoping you're, you're going to feel comfortable and see the need to use injury facts after this presentation to help meet your data needs. With that, injury facts is a huge resource. Uh, I, I have do not have time to go over all of injury facts. I'm not even going to try. But given we're focusing on roadway today, I'm going to first start and talk about workplace roadway safety trends. And that's going to obviously be from our work section. To do that, I'm going to use primarily the uh, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or BLS. Then I'm going to transition to uh, data from our motor vehicle section of injury facts. That section uh, pr um, uses data from two different sources. The first big, sort of big picture data source uh, we'll be using is data from National Center for Health Statistics, which is a subcomponent of the CDC. Then I'll be uh, transitioning to more detailed data uh, specific to road safety incidents from the uh, National, uh, NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The, both, all these data sources have strengths and weaknesses, and I think they complement one another really well. 
And through a combination of these data sources, I think you're going to have a really good understanding of what's happening safety-wise regarding roadway safety at work on the, on the job, as well as overall road safety trends um, using National Highway Traffic Safety Administration data. With that, let's start with uh, workplace trends. Before we go into the numbers, I do have to highlight that there's a really important data change that has occurred with the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's more about how they report data than really changes in the data. What's not changing um, are the, if you use industry rates, uh, that, those come out every year and uh, that's not changing. Usually those become available in, in November or December. Also, what's not changing, any of the fatality data I will be uh, sharing with you today. All that data has been available um, for many years and it's going to continue un uninterrupted. What is changing is historically the um, BLS only provided detailed data for the most serious, serious cases, cases involving days away from work. And when I mean detailed data, it's information about employee demographics, the injury event, the, uh, the nature of injury, the uh, part of body injured, et cetera. All of, all of that is detailed data that was previously available only for the most serious cases involving days away from work. We now have that same detailed data for less serious cases, cases involving job transfer and, and restriction. And that's a really great uh, leap forward, and it really provides a really important um, uh, additional context for understanding of what is happening regarding injuries and illnesses in the workplace. However, the, uh, the downside of this shift is the BLS is moving from an annual reporting of this detailed data to a biannual reporting. So the most recent data I have to share with you regarding non-fatal trends reflects the years of 2021 and 2022 combined. We no longer have a single uh, year uh, non-fatal estimates when we're talking about detail detailed data. And I'll point this out as we go through the data. But with that, let's talk about actual data. This is one of the pages from Injury Facts or an excerpt of, of it. It's in our workplace section and it's comparing the number of deaths that occurred leading causes of the death in 2022 on the left and leading causes of non-fatal injury and illness involving days away from work on the right. And as you see, uh, the leading causes of the death in 2022 is transportation, false slips and trips and violence while the leading causes of non-fatal cases involving days away from work is exposure to harmful substances or environments, and that's pretty much COVID, um, overexertion, false slips and trips, and actually transportation incidents are ranked six is the leading cause of uh, non-fatal injuries involving days away from work. But uh, in this chart actually has a lot more sort of hidden behind the scenes that you, we can use. The first trick of using these charts is to hover over any of these sections. By doing so, we could see that transportation deaths in 2022 totaled 2,066 and represented 38% of all deaths. We also could see looking at that trend line that they dipped down in 2020, largely to do with the uh, business disruptions associated with the pandemic and have been moving up slowly ever since. But there's more we can do. We could actually click on the transportation segment of this chart and see a drill down of what incidents make up the overall transportation uh, category as reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We see roadway incidents involving motorized land vehicles represent 66 of percent of these transportation deaths followed by pedestrian vehicle incidents and non-roadway incidents. When we look at leading causes of transportation non-fatal cases, 65% are again roadway incidents involving motorized land vehicles, then we have non-roadway incidents, and then finally pedestrian vehicle incidents. Obviously doing this, we can still hover over each of the sections, 
we see uh, in 2022, there was 1,369 roadway incidents involving motorized land vehicles that resulted in fatalities. This represents 66% again of the transportation deaths. And by hovering over the uh, non-fatal section, we can see that uh, days away from work cases uh, totaled 54,830 in the years of 2021 and 2022. And for purposes of looking at trends, we took that biannual total and divided it equally between 2021 and 2022. So we can compare it to previously reported annual counts. We also, throughout this presentation, I'm gonna be sharing with you some state data. I've been asked to focus on Texas, Ohio, and Louisiana. If you're not from one of those states, I apologize, but, uh, but many of the participants today will be from those three states. So the let's first look at roadway deaths involving motorized land vehicles for these states. In 2022, we uh, had 210 deaths in Texas, which was an increase of around 5.5%, 40 deaths in Ohio, an increase of 15%, and Louisiana, 22, which is fairly uh, steady from 2021. We also have the same types of trends for cases involving days away from work. Again, our data reflects uh, biannual estimates. So what we did here in order to look at the trends is calculate the annual average for both 21 and 22, which is basically half of the full biannual total. And then we can compare that annual average to uh, trends in 2020. Uh, so in Texas, we uh, had a, an annual average of 1,565 days away from work cases in 21 and 22, and that's an actual increase uh, or a decrease of about 30% from 2020. In Ohio, we had 800 and 85 uh, cases involving days away from work, which is an increase of, of 40. But although that is a very large increase, if you look at uh, previous years in 2017 and 18, it's very consistent. I am not sure what uh, um, caused that large increase there in 2019. And finally, Louisiana experienced 545 uh, average cases in these two years, and that's an increase of over 100%. But again, if you look at pre-pandemic uh, levels, it's very consistent with historic trends. We also have uh, some data details on several safety topics, one of which in injury facts is obviously roadway incidents involving motorized land vehicles. And these pages are really good at getting a really quick sense of what is happening in the workplace regarding these safety topics. Again, in 2022, we had 1,369 fatalities. Um, uh, fatalities, and this is an increase of uh, about 9% from 2021. Using this uh, uh, snapshot, we could also see the majority of these deaths are occurring to uh, male workers, 92%, and that the number of deaths tends to increase with the uh, increasing age of the worker all the way up to age 55 and to 64, and that the majority of these deaths are occurring to white, not Hispanic workers. We also have the same data uh, for um, cases involving days away from work. Again, we are looking, our latest data is for 21 and 22 combined, and that uh, annual average is at around 27,915. And this is a 6% increase from 2020. So what we're seeing is both the days away from work cases as well as fatality cases in the workplace involving motorized land vehicles is increasing. Also from this page, we could see that these cases tend to be relatively disruptive, resulting uh, in an average of 14 days away from work. Around 28, 29% of these cases are impacting female workers, and that these cases are uh, spiking for younger workers. Remember, if we go back, um, 
most of uh, the deaths increase steadily with the increasing age of the worker. We see a very different trend with this non-fatal data, with these days away from work cases spiking among workers from age 25 to 44. I also want to uh, point out a data weakness we have with Bureau of Labor Statistics, and that is very poor reporting regarding the uh, race and ethnic origin of injured uh, workers. In uh, 21, 22, 44% of these cases were reported without race or ethnic origin information. And, and this issue of non-reporting reporting of this information is not unique to motorized land vehicle incidents. It is a, 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 an issue across all industries and all in, uh, indis, uh, injury events. And the problem is we can't use this data because it's so incomplete to help better understand if any worker subgroups are at disproportionate risk for injury. Uh, we're collecting this information, but it's not being reported uh, well enough in order to really uh, gain any insight regarding this information. And finally, we have uh, trends on days away from work rates per 10,000 workers. And you see again that the, uh, the rate increased from 2.7 per 10,000 workers in 2020 to an average rate of 2.8 in 21 and 22. So what we see is all three indicators, number of fatalities, number of non-fatal cases, and the non-fatal rate have all been increasing uh, recently with our latest data. We also see some something really interesting. And if we look at the, the, uh, the age of workers and their relative risk for injury and illness involving uh, motorized land vehicles, it is very consistent all the way from age 20 to, to uh, greater than 64. Although we did see some differences in the number of cases, when we calculate the, the rate per 10,000 workers, they're all very similar. But we also are seeing that males continue to be at increased risk for uh, motorized land vehicle injuries compared to women, 3.5 per 10,000 workers compared to 1.9 among uh, female workers. And we do not have rates re um, reflecting race and ethnic origin of workers. We also have some cost data um, re um, in this case regarding uh, workers' compensation costs. Uh, we have a, a partnership with the National Council on Compensation Insurance, NCCI, which provides us this summary data. They are looking at actual workers' compensation claim cost averages. Uh, the last data they have reflects claims that were originally filed in 2020 to 2021. And the average uh, workers' comp claim cost across all types of claims was 41,757. Uh, the uh, over half of this is medical costs, 22,203, and the uh, remainder is indemnity or the uh, uh, the payout to uh, injured employees to compensate for lost wages came in at 19,554. But we ought, we can look specifically at motor vehicle workers' comp claims. They are the most expensive claim type, averaging 89,152. Uh, $49,395 of that is from medical, and the remainder, $39,757, is reflecting indemnity costs. Following that, just out of here, uh, just out of interest, are burn workers' compensation claim costs and fall slips and trips, being the second and third most expensive type of workers' compensation claim. So with that, that is the pretty much the data we have from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. From that, we can glean that unfortunately things are trending upwards, both fatalities, non-fatal cases, as well as non-fatal rates. But the Bureau of Labor Statistics does not do a great job of providing a lot of detail around the why of it. 
they don't provide uh, additional information regarding if uh, speeding was involved in the in incident or if uh, alcohol impairment was an uh, issue. For that, we need to move on to different data sources. So we're going to be moving on to overall motor vehicle trends. Uh, I'm going to start with CDC data and then for additional detail, look at NHTSA data, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. This is not specific to occupational, but our workers don't drive in a bubble. They are, uh, they are experiencing the same national safety trends as all drivers and are, um, are subject to those risks. So let's look at the data first. This is data from the CDC or National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And what we see here, this is overall motor vehicle deaths. And overall motor vehicle deaths include both roadway deaths, public roadway deaths, which is what NHTSA focuses on, as well as non-roadway incidents. And uh, what we see here is that we have experienced since um, starting in 2020, very large increases in motor vehicle fatalities. We experienced an 8.3% increase in fatalities in 2020 and an additional 11% increase in fatalities in 2021. Some light is at the end of the, uh, the tunnel. We see in 2022, finally, a decrease in motor vehicle uh, fatalities, a decrease of 2%. But we see that we're still well above pre-pandemic levels. It, during the pandemic in 2020 and post-pandemic 2021, uh, a lot of safety issues had emerged, and I'll be going over those in just a few slides. Uh, but it really does look our roads are starting to get safer again, uh, and we're recovering from the uh, increasing risk of driving during those years. In addition, the National Safety Con oh. Before I move from this slide, I want to point out some really thing, a nice uh, component of the website, and that is providing actual data points. These charts do a great job, I think, of, of painting the picture, of explaining the trends, but sometimes you need the actual data. And to get that actual data, you just click on the data table icon above all of the charts, and you can download the uh, Excel chart to use the data how, how, you, how you need. But, but in addition, uh, the National Safety Council, we collect our, our own preliminary uh, estimates. Again, the latest official data is 2022, and we saw a 2% decrease in fatalities. Our preliminary 2023 data indicates that there's another 4% decrease in fatalities on top of that 2% decrease that we experienced in 2022. So the, uh, the road safety is improving, but we are still projecting more fatalities than pre-pandemic levels. So there is more progress that needs to be made. So how are those three states that I am focusing on doing in national trends. And this is look, you, looking at NHTSA data. And NHTSA data, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration data, is specific to public roadway trends. Again, 42,514 nationwide, a decrease of 2%. Tes Texas experienced 4,408 deaths, a decrease of also 2%. Ohio did even better, a decrease of 6%, uh, standing at 1,275 deaths. Louisiana at 906 deaths, a decrease of 7%. Now let's look at some important safety issues. The first of which is seatbelts. And this is a really important chart. It may not look exciting, but it really tells a very important safety uh, story. The top blue line is looking at the percent of seatbelt use. Uh, in 2022, we achieved 91.6% seatbelt use. The green line represents the percent of vehicle occupants who were killed not wear, uh, properly restrained, not wearing seatbelts. In 2022, that uh, percentage was just under 50%, 498 What you see here is the larger the percent of seatbelt use, the lower the percent of unrestrained deaths are. 
for an example, in 2000, only 70% of us use seatbelts. And that over and over 60% of the deaths on our uh, occurring to occupants were unrestrained. So it's clear that seatbelts help prevent uh, deaths on our roadway. It's one of the most important things you can do to mitigate the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the impact of a collision. So how are our states doing? Again, we're at around 91% seatbelt usage nationwide and around 50% of deaths are occurring to non-restrained occupants. In Texas, the usage is 90% and the deaths to occupants, around 49% of them are unrestrained. In Ohio, we have lower uh, seatbelt usage at around 81% and 57% of vehicle occupant deaths are unrestrained. And then finally in Louisiana, we have 86% usage and around 58% of vehicle occupants uh, are unrestrained who, who perish. Now let's look at distracted driving. And two really important, interesting trends are occurring regarding how drivers are behaving behind the wheel. The green line is the, uh, the percent of drivers at any given moment who are perceived uh, or, or observed talking on their cell phones, holding handheld conversations. That is down to 2.1% of drivers at any given moment. And if you look at the green line, it's it's been going down pretty steady. The dark blue line is the percent of drivers at any given moment observed to be manually manipulating their cell phones. That could be texting, that, that could be surfing the web. It's not, uh, these are true observations and they can't really tell what a person's doing on the phone. That has been going up fairly steadily. It did uh, decrease slightly in 2022, but it's still at 3.1% of drivers at any given moment who are uh, participating in these highly distracting behaviors while behind the wheel. Now let's look at some fatality data. And the, before I talk about specific numbers, what's really important to know is these numbers are widely believed to be gross underestimates of the true toll of distracted driving. For National Highway Traffic NHTSA to uh, categorize a crash as a distracted driving crash, they either have to have an eyewitness or a self-report of the driver admitting that they were distracted at the time of the crash. Both of those are relatively rare events, so we know we're, we're missing the vast majority of distracted driving crashes. But looking at the data we do have, in 2022, uh, NHTSA uh, charted 368 fatal crashes involving cell phone distraction and another 2,679 fatal crashes involving some other form of distraction. Let's move to uh, alcohol use. Uh, and, and alcohol impaired driving. And, and I have two different stories to say. Let's start with the positive. We've made great long-term progress regarding the uh, decrease of alcohol impaired fatal crashes. In 1982, fully 48% of roadway deaths were involved at least one alcohol impaired driver. We're down to 32% of deaths in 2022 involving an alcohol impaired driver. Now what's for the bad news? We have lost a lot of ground since the pandemic. In 2019, we were down to 28% of uh, f fatalities involving an alcohol impaired driver. We are now again up to 32%. So there is more work we need to make up for this loss. Uh, um, um, rely on, on proven methods such as click it or ticket uh, enforcement activities to get this number back down to where we know it can be because we were there before the pandemic. How are the states doing? Well, again, 32% overall of the fatalities involve an alcohol impaired driver. This compares to 42% in Texas. 37% in Ohio and 29% in Louisiana. 
Now let's uh, move on to speeding. Uh, and this is an area, another area where we have lost ground in um, during the pandemic. Pre-pandemic in, in 2019, 26% of all fatalities on our roadways involved speeding. We are now up to 29% in 2022, and that has been relatively stable since 2020. Again, this is an area which we have seen historic improvement on, and we've lost ground, and, and we can need to uh, regain that momentum. How are the states doing? Again, 29% nationwide, 35% in Texas, 21% in Ohio, and 23% in Louisiana. And i uh, like to uh, wrap it up. I know we're running out of time. Work zone uh, deaths. Uh, there was 891 deaths in uh, 2022. And the majority of those deaths uh, were drivers of motor vehicles. We also have data specific to worker pedestrian deaths in work zones. This is going back to uh, BLS data. In 2022, we had 44 deaths, which is below the uh, uh, average number of deaths of 54 that we uh, have seen since 2011. And with that, I would like to thank you very much. And I'm not sure if we have any time for questions, but please uh, submit your questions and we will respond through email to address your questions. Great. Thank you, Ken. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat. Again, if you have something, um, pop it in there really quick and we will follow up in our post communication email. I am uh, putting into the chat our evaluation. It is a very quick, just a few questions that really helps us know what you're looking for, what resources, what future webinars, um, those types of things. So please take just a quick minute to fill that out. We really do appreciate your comments and we do take them when we look at um, what resources, materials, and things like that that we are looking to develop. I want to thank Ken for uh, presenting for us today. The information was awesome, and um, we just really appreciate all your insight into those injury facts. I also want to thank everyone for joining us today. We know your time's valuable, and you chose to spend it with us, and so we appreciate each and every one of you uh, logging on today for uh, the information that we um, had to share. So with that, um, if there's no questions, um, we will conclude this webinar for today. And again, we appreciate you uh, joining us today. And as you go about your day, just be safe. And uh, remember to uh, buckle up and keep your phone down. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.